Ryan Doyle in for Michael Cora in this evening. Don Cherry's comments about women in the dressing room, the locker rooms of major sports teams continues to send waves throughout the news and the sports world. And uh, for more on this, Joe Warmington, who had an opportunity, Toronto Sun columnist, to speak with Don Cherry. Listen, I'm not a fan of Don Cherry. I don't like the guy. I think he's a bit of a, a windbag. I think he's a relic from yesteryear. I'm not sure Don Cherry, though, would think that those were insults. He might take them as compliments. In fact, he even told you that he's a bit of a redneck. Not a bit of a redneck. He said he's the lower echelons of redneck. But he always so speaks so well of you, Ryan. No, I does he now? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> He, uh, once again, uh, everybody took uh, the bait. Uh, he went out there and said what he said, and he spent a lot of time on it. At the end of the day, Don never said once that women can't cover the hockey or shouldn't cover the hockey. He has a trouble with, you know, his vision and memory of what it was like in his day. And a little bit from today, people said he, he doesn't go in dressing rooms. That guy is in more hockey arenas than any of the people involved in hockey you see on TV combined. Every night he's out at hockey. I, I guess the question for a lot of people, though, is why bring this up now? This was something that he was a bit of a, a revolutionary on the, back in the 1970s. He led a female reporter into the, into the locker room. It was somebody he respected, a woman who works for the New York Times now. Uh, he had no problem back then, but why bring it up now? It was over the Duncan Keith comments, and uh, basically, you know, he saw that as Duncan Keith's bad behavior. And he feels that some of the players uh, take advantage, as he said, of it. It somehow got flipped around onto the female reporters, which was not his point. And I think I clarified that in my column, which you can read on torontosun.com. Uh, this is not a new issue. And you, you know, you've been a reporter. You've covered a, a whole bunch of different beats over time. Uh, you look back to the 1978, I would believe it was, when the New York Yankees had a bit of an issue with one of their reporters, a Sports Illustrated reporter, Melissa Lutke. Uh, she had to go to, all the way to take the MLB to, to court over that. Uh, then you fast forward to Lisa Olson back in 1990. She was a, a female reporter with the New England Patriots team. With Boston Globe, I think, uh, New England Patriots uh, was her beat. And she had all sorts of bad things done to her. She was basically sexually harassed in the locker room with players putting their genitals where they shouldn't be and doing this kind of thing. How much of this is a problem with the players themselves and how much is it having the reporters there that are female? Well, I think that on any team you've got mature men and you've got young boys and sometimes they transform each other. I mean, sometimes sure. the older guys and it depends and every team has their different people and different personalities. I personally have seen, uh, you know, in the home leaf dressing room, you don't see a lot of nudity there. Uh, because it's kind of set up almost like a stage. You've been in there as well. But the, dr the visitor's dress room is a different story. You see people coming and going, that kind of thing. Uh, and also on the road, I don't know if it's like it used to be, but there was a lot of pretty basic dressing rooms. Now, and this is all sports. I mean, football is a whole different thing, sure. baseball and basketball. But, uh, you know, to try to answer your question, I think that, you know, basically what Don felt was that you know, the fact that there's this uh, double standard that the men can't go in the women's rooms and the women can go in the men's, it, it sort of sticks in his craw. Whether he's right or wrong, he doesn't care. This is what his point of view was, and we're all talking about it. We always think to, you know, at least I think to myself, that Don Cherry is somebody who's maybe living in a bit of a bubble. He doesn't hear the criticisms. He doesn't hear people calling him a misogynist. Uh, is it that, or is it that he just simply doesn't care? What, did, what impression did you get from him? He doesn't live in a bubble. We talked about that. I mean, you, you know, I've been to his house. It's, uh, you know, it's a nice house, but it's not a, a house that he should be living in, if, you know, in terms of a TV star status. It's not a palace. No, it's a regular house in Mississauga, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a nice house, I mean, you know, but uh, it's not a mansion. And he does go to hockey games every night with his son, Tim, goes to Tim Hortons all the time. He goes to the garage uh, and hangs around there. He's got five old cars that they tinker with. He goes out every day and talks to the garbage men. That's his life. He sees that as being a humble, regular laborer. You and I both know that when he walks in a room, he's a star. Um, and we don't uh, have that happen to us when we walk into a room. You've got to work your, you got to work the room. Sure. He doesn't have to do that. So, you're right in that sense. I don't know whether he completely understands that. You know, he is Don Cherry. I doubt he sits at the back of the plane or, you know, stands in lines. Although he really does see himself as that regular working man, and that's what he's trying to convey here. And I think that he legitimately has earned some of that. Now, the CBC decided not to reprimand him in any way, shape, or form. Do, do you get the sense from him that he has free license, free reign as to what he can say when he's standing there with Ron McLean on, uh, on Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday night? Well, i got two uh, parts to that. I, I don't think he thinks he has free reign. I don't think he said anything uh, wrong that could get him fired. Mm -hmm. It's like the body check in the hockey game. You know, they gave a penalty in it, the one last night. Uh, but 
you know, it was a clean check. So that, that, that's what this was. Uh, you don't have to like his opinion. I think he goes in wanting to be fired. I think that he spent all these years surprised he's gone this far. And I got to tell you, and you know this yourself as a commentary guy, you have to think like that. I think like that when I write my column. This is the last one. And I don't sure. care if it ticks off the publisher, the editor, the president of the company, or every reader, as long as I feel strongly about it. Because if you play scared, you can't do this job. And there are people that try to play it scared, and you know they don't last long. Because you're so busy playing scared that you end up just, you can't do it. You've got to have an uh, extra gear to be uh, a commentary guy. So he goes out and says what he says, and if he gets fired, then he's kind of like dying on his own petard. Well, now, it's, it's interesting you say that, because as much as he thinks of himself as a guy's guy, and he's, you know, just out in the garage, hanging out, talking about cars, talking shop, maybe talking a little bit of sports, he has influence over what happens. Whether he likes it or not, he's got influence over what, what the league does, uh, especially what happens with journalists that go into these locker rooms. Players' careers, too. Yeah, I mean, he really does. He's, he's got that kind of sway to him. He's a bit of a kingmaker that way. Does he have enough impact and sway here to make some change? Is change necessary You're in, the something. in the NHL? You're onto something. You know what? I, I'm like you. I smell a rat here, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is. I think they're going to take that and keep the reporters out of the NHL and all sports dressing rooms coming real soon. I think there's an underlying current. Because it came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, obviously there was the incident with the Blackhawks, and there was an incident there, and there was an apology as well. But I think that there is something there that Don Cherry might even smell it himself. He might, or his instincts are, are, are what they are. You know, if it happens, it's going to really hurt our business because sure. you can't t get to know the players. It's hard enough now. But there's, the you know, on the baseball side, the Bob Elliott's or the Steve Simmons and Mike Zeisberger's in the Sun Media chain that they kind of are legends in their own right and they the players kind of respect them if you can't get out the players then you can't get to know them you can't write calls well, and i was going to say even if they bring the players out after the game as they have you know in, in different i think college sports they bring them out to a podium where everybody sits and asks questions i think you lose a little something there's an authenticity a genuine quality where you, you lose a lot because the, the players yeah. have showered they've had an opportunity well, like to like our of interviews do you want to sit himself? there and be one of a hundred people's you know these stock answers or you want to be able to Talk to someone one on one and press them like you're pressing here. You know you can do that one on one, but if there's, you know, 50 people out there and I'm sitting at a podium, then you get nothing. So, it's going to be a problem. But I think you're onto something. There, there's something under under this, isn't there? Yeah, and I would also say that there's a vulnerability when a player's standing there in a towel surrounded by people, there's a certain vulnerability where they're going to probably give you more of an honest answer. And we've seen some of those honest answers. They've been fantastic in those dressing rooms, in those locker rooms. I think you lose some of that, that vulnerability and some of that authenticity when you take it away from there. Twitter and the smartphone has changed the game as well. First of all, the players can access who they want. Uh, they can even put out their own tweets. I follow, you know, I follow sure. Sherry, I follow Nazem Kadri, Dion Phaneuf, all these people, I follow them on Twitter. If they have something to say, I can, they can say it on there and not have to have a news conference. The other thing is that the players are cognizant of all these cameras on these phones. And, you know, the, the teams are too. When you go into these rooms, you know, they're really, really tough about that. You know, no, no cell phone pictures, no uh, video, that kind of thing. Sure. It'll be, it'll be very interesting to see where we go from here, John. Yeah, great stuff. Appreciate the time today. Yeah, great job.